I've seen a lot of good and a lot of bad things in my time. But the one thing that I find consistent within the military is the communication. A lot of things can hinder the communication. Like when it was bare experience, and it goes on and on. So my business proposal today is how can we improve the communication in the military? As mentioned, a lot of things can hinder the communication in the military. You have your language barriers. You have your knowledge, experience. It could be just understanding in the, in the military. In order to be a good leader, you must first be a good follower. Let's talk about language barriers for a little bit. So according to statistics, 80% of the military personnel speak English. You do have another 10% that speak Spanish. Another 10% speak other language. That other language could be Tagalog, which is Filipino. It could be Chinese, it could be Russian. It could be Portuguese, Poland, whatever it is, falls into the other 10%. All right, due to recent data, right, these are color coded by the officers in the Navy, the chief petty officer, which is the light blue, and then you have your E6 and junior, which is the green. Okay, so let's talk about leadership. Okay. Roughly around 23% of the officers have leadership experience. With those 23, that's including like your senior ranking officer. Those are the ones that have experience. Leadership, also with the chief petty officers. That's around 60%. That's where most of your leadership comes in. So they have been into the military a little bit longer than some of the officers. And they have completed a lot of different jobs. E6 and junior is roughly almost 40%. Their E6 carries most of that since they have been in for quite some time. Misunderstanding. Almost 80% of the misunderstanding comes from E6 and junior. Why is that, you may ask? The E6 and junior comprise of brand new personnel, roughly between the ages of 18 and 21. This is their first job. They don't know much of anything. So they're still trying to understand what's going on. Experience. This goes back also to the leadership part, which your chief petty officers maintain most of the experience. As mentioned earlier, they do carry, they have been a lot to a lot of different places. Language. Carry most by your E6 and junior. Why do you think that E6 and junior carry most of my language? Because that is where most of the other languages come in. Your Filipinos, your Tagalog, your Mandarin, your Polish. Come mainly from your E6 and junior. Here are some recent demographics. Let's start with the active duty side and then we'll move over to the reserve. The active duty side, 36% make up the make up the army. 24% is your navy. 14% the Marines. 23% Air Force. And a small one right there, the 3% is your Coast Guard. Let's look on the Reserve side. With the reserve side, 42% makes up the Army National Guard. We have 24% is your Army Reserve. 13% makes up our National Guard. 8% is your Air Force Reserve. 7% is a Navy Reserve. Five percent makes up the Marine Corps Reserve, and one percent makes up the Coast Guard Reserve. 
plays this line system with important commands. It has captured both the military and the regional side of the military. This one most of the demographics come from. This one most of the great experience is going to come from. It's from these two branches. So what can we do to improve the communication? What we can do is social media. It is in the 2000s. Everyone is into social media. It can be either Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, and also we have that most military bases are using now, which is called Groupie. With this generation, with this generation, social media has become a major linkage with the military. According to Washington Examiner, social media and the U.S. military have become extremely linked together. How can we implement this? Smartphones. I know a lot of personnel, a lot of people, pass their cell to the smartphones. Most of them use the old Nokia flip phones, which are slowly fading out. So. The best way to implement this, everyone has a smartphone. Make sure you also have an app, okay? You just go into the Google Play List or our iPhone Play Store and download the app. Okay, how can I do that? Okay, you can use your data. Well, if you don't want to waste your data, even link up to a Wi Fi. Evaluation. So after we have implemented, we want some feedback. We want to know what everyone is thinking about the implementation. There are two ways that you can get feedback. One is direct feedback. The direct feedback that is face to face. What did you think of the of the application? Or what did you think of it? You will get that face to face. With the face to face or the direct evaluation feedback. We can go more in depth, but what was wrong with it? How can we approve on it? The other step will be indirect. The indirect is mainly for child, child personnel. That is, if you do not want to go face to face, you can either do it by telephone, it can be done through paper, it can be done through email, it can be done through an app or a website. With that one, it can happen in person, but you, with the indirect, you're just trying to get the broad consensus. And like the direct feedback, it's more one-on-one, -on -one, it can be more personal. These are the references that we used in the citation today. I had Pew, Pew Research Center, as well as the Washington Examiner website. This is my presentation. Thank you very much.